Hello everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Jaden. Welcome to Tiger News. It's our last show of the trimester and we have a lot of news to share with you. Virginia is standing by with the section champion girls swim team. Virginia? Thank you. I am here with the girls swim and dive section champions. Um, can you introduce yourselves? I'm Molly Johnson. I'm Maddie Graham. I'm Jordan Schmucker. I'm Mackenzie Roach. I'm Hannah Ryan. I'm Anna Sparados. I'm Summer Krause. I'm Faith Ring. I'm Camille Gerke. Uh, what kind of improvement has the team seen this year? I would say the team saw improvement a lot in like team morality. We all became extremely positive and we all were wanting the same team goals overall. So I think the team this year was really close and that's what helped us to be so successful this year. Last year was the program's first ever section championship and it was during a pandemic with tons of changes during the season. What did it mean to repeat as section champions this year? Uh, I really meant the world to us. Uh, we put in so much hard work in and out of the water and we really just trained super hard for this. It's just always fun to be part of the team, especially with this amazing group of girls. It's really been a fun year. How do you mentally prepare for a meet? Um, I like to mentally prepare for a meet. Um, my favorite thing to do is listen to music or just really try to focus in and kind of zone out all distractions. Some other things that we did was a lot of times we would play music and we would just dance around and have fun. And at some, at some point, Shakvi came in to all of us line dancing. It was really fun. Out of 12 meets, out of 12 events in a meet, five school records have been broken so far. What's the secret to having so much success in the pool this year? Um, our team had so much depth this year. We have super talented girls in every single grade. So that made our team incredibly strong. And uh, the work ethic is something I've never seen before this season. Um, it's been a blast. Everyone has worked so hard, and we saw that all pay off at the end. Uh, yeah, I think that just everyone, like, kind of this year we were really focusing a lot on the team aspect and how everyone is swimming for everyone else. It's not just your own individual times. It's working on making sure that everyone is doing the best they can and happy with what they do. What are you looking to accomplish at this week's state meet? Um, I'm really just hoping to have fun and obviously, I mean, maybe place well, but I think fun, having fun is I think the most important thing. I think we're looking for some higher placements this year, really making top eight, having fun on the pool deck and really just setting new standards for next year and setting us good for um, the upcoming new season. And lastly, what is your favorite memory of the season? My favorite memory is probably one of the first times Badger came in to watch our practice. Over half of the varsity team was wearing life jackets. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that my favorite memory, um, Camille touched on this earlier, I think, at every home meet, we would line dance to Cotton Eye Joe, and I think that was probably one of the more fun parts of the season. Um, one of my favorite memories is us fake drowning, and then Mackenzie comes <laughs> and saves us with her lifeguard skills. <laughs> Shout out to Colum for teaching me how to save people. <laughs> <laughs> he promised me know how to swim. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming in, and congratulations, swim and dive. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Virginia, and congratulations to the girls' swim and dive team. Superheroes comes in, come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes, as is the case here, they even have tails. On October 11th, the International Fund for Animal Welfare honored Bear, an Australian shepherd with the Animal of the Year Award. The six-year-old pooch helped save over 100 koalas from the devastating bushfires that swept across New South Wales. Bear's backstory is all too familiar for rescue dogs. His previous owners found his boundless energy and obsessive enthusiasm for play too much to handle and decided to give him up for adoption. Within minutes, the traders knew he would be perfect for a conservation dog. Bear possessed a keen sense of smell. More importantly, he had no interest in killing the animals he found. The Diversity Club here at FHS is a growing community of students. This week, Arone had an opportunity to interview Mr. Williams to find out more. 
I took some time this week to interview Mr. Williams about Diversity Club. My name is Mr. Williams. I'm the academic diversity coordinator for the high school. I had the chance to meet with Mr. Williams this week and find out exactly what it is Diversity Club. A club for uh, students, especially our BIPOC students, or all students, to recognize culture and the different cultures that we have in the school so we can cohabitate together with equity and equality. Diversity is about really celebrating everybody's differences in a nutshell. In other words, honoring each other as individuals. Anybody that, that wants to, from grades nine all the way up to 12, there's no precursors, there's no limitations. If you want to learn something about each other's culture, then the club, that club is the club that you need to be at. Roma Matias, reporting for Tiger News. Hi, I'm Hannah, I'm the president of FCCLA. Hi, I'm Ben, I'm a secretary of FCCLA. Hi, I'm Grace, and I'm the other president of FCCLA. Hi, I'm Jackson, and I'm the opportunity outreacher. Hi, I'm Luke, and I'm a member of SCCLA. So we are sponsoring an event this Friday and Monday during lunches. It's called Ultimate Gator Golf. It'll be a mini golf course filled with alligators and lots of other fun stuff in the lunchroom during Friday and Monday. The prizes you will win are a Gatorade if you win and a guaranteed candy for participating. Um, the days that we are doing this is Friday the 19th and Monday the 22nd. We're doing this during all of our, the lunches A, B, C, and D. And it will be set up outside the aerobics classroom or like by that tiger shop or above the auditorium recital hall thing. Bring cash because you get one hit for $2 and three hits for $5. All the proceeds are going towards tie blankets that will be donated to the Lewis Shelter in Burnsville, which is a shelter for women and children. Thank you. <laughs> Space-related films have come a long way since A Trip to the Moon, a silent movie, was released in 1902. Though we've made great strides with special effects and editing, no one has ever attempted to actually film a movie in space. Until now. That's right. On October 5, 2021, astronauts at the International Space Station welcomed their first fiction film crew. They spent 12 days filming a 35 to 40 minute segment for the feature film dubbed The Challenge. The story tells the story of a surgeon uh, going to space to operate on a sick cosmonaut whose condition prevents him from returning to Earth for treatment. Can Do Canines has a positive presence on the FHS campus through several service dogs going through training with Miss Pierce and Mr. Tauchi. Tiger News producer Virginia Risto took a closer look into the Can Do Canines program. Uh, we picked up Farmer from Can Do Canines um, sometime in May of 2021, and he's been with us ever since. To get Farmer, uh, we actually, this Farmer is actually our second Can Do Canines dog that we've been training to be a service dog. Our first dog was, was Zenith, and uh, he actually graduated from Can Do Canines, and he is helping out a, a kid with autism and goes to school with him every day. And so getting Farmer, we were kind of already like pre-approved with the program. So um, Can Do Canines actually reached out to us to uh, take another dog because we said, our family said, it was like too painful to like have a dog, love a dog, have a dog in your house and then like give him up. And we were like, we're not going to do this again. And then Can Do Canines called us and they said, hey, we have a dog that we would like you to train. So the rest is history and we have, now we have Farmer. It is really difficult to give them up, but actually they're going on to do bigger and better things. So to be part of like their story and you know, to like have a history with that dog when, they, when you see what they're going to do in the future and actually be part of their graduation ceremony. That's like the coolest thing ever. Our family started with Can Do Canines in 2018 and it started out with just a, it's a informative session you go to for an hour. You watch a, a really, really cool video of puppies and dogs. And like I was hooked like that because at the time we didn't have a dog in our house. And uh, so it was, you, you go through the training and then you get pre-approved. There's a person that comes out and looks at your house. Is your house and is your yard fitting for a service dog? So 
Yeah, so we, pa we passed the test in 2018. Do it, join Can Do Canines. Miss Pierce is the one that like recruited our family and it's been so much fun and so rewarding and just, uh, you get to have a dog, but you don't get to have a dog. You have to give it up after you've done the training with them. Or the, um, and so it's, it's been so fun for our family to have a can-do dog to, to train and to like make them uh, a service dog or help them become a service dog. Partial lunar eclipses are not typically considered as newsworthy as total lunar eclipses. However, the one taking place on, <laughs> on November 18th and 19th is definitely worthy of a mention. It is the year's final partial, partial lunar eclipse in the longest, and the longest one in 1,000 years. With 97% of the moon slipping into the Earth's shadow, <laughs> event also promises to be spectacular. The eclipse will be, will, be visible, will be visible to a large area of the globe. Some of the best views will be reserved for North American residents. The November eclipse's long duration is the result of a micro moon. During the eclipse's peak point, the moon will be just 41 hours from Apache, the furthest point from Earth. The distance causes our satellite to travel slower along its orbit and take longer to pass through Earth's shadow. Elise and Meredith have a very, very important announcement to share with all of you. Hey, girls. <laughs> oh, Meredith. Oh. Hi, didn't see you there. My name is Meredith. And I'm Elise. Today we are here to talk to you about the Tiger Tribune, a very new club at our school. The Tiger Tribune is a, the Farmington's new literary arts magazine that focuses in giving students a creative outlet for any type of reading or writing. An art. An art. The submission forms will be coming out soon, released by Mr. Pickens on Schoology. So if you have any specific writing or art pieces that you'd like to be featured in the magazine, feel free to submit them. You can share any kind of art you've made. You can do stuff that you've made for a school project, or you've made at home, or you've just made for this specific submission. Uh, you can do any type of art. If it's a digital version, you can just submit a digital copy. But if it's a physical piece, like a painting, you can just take a nice, clear picture of it and send it in. Uh, we also do poems. You can do creative stories. You can do any type of writing. It could be a report, whatever you like. We look forward to seeing your submissions in our Dropbox. Have a nice day. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at FHS Tiger Tribune. We will follow you back. Bye. Bye. Sarah Park has known about the impact of music on the brain since a young age. The 13-year-old who has been playing violin since she was four says she noticed its positive effect on those around her, especially her grandmother who suffered from a mental disorder. Now the Jacksonville, Florida middle schooler hopes, hopes to use music therapy to help others struggling with mental health. Her invention, Spark, Plus, Scar Spark Care Plus, earned her the title of America's Top Young Scientist at the 3M Scientist Challenge on October 19, 2021. Spark Care Plus requires participants to respond to a series of questions based on the Hamilton Anxiety and Depression Scale designed to assess the person's mental state. The device's inbuilt sensors record vital mental health indicators such as heart rate and blood pressure. Spark Care Plus's AI component analyzes the information and recommends the appropriate music to help lift the participant's spirits. Our very own Jackson McMahon is a huge Patriots fan. This week he breaks out into the standings for all of your favorite teams. Hello, my name is Jackson. I'm doing a feature on the NFL, so let's get into this. So in the AFC, the Bills are leading the East, the Ravens are leading the North, the Titans are leading the South, and the Raiders are leading the West as of Week 9 Thursday. And then in the NFC, the Cowboys are leading the East, the Packers are leading the North, the Bucks are leading the South, and the Cardinals are leading the West. Let's get into my Patriots now. So in Week 1, they played the Dolphins, and they lost 17-16. Mac Jones threw his first career touchdown pass. Week 2... They forced Zach Wilson to throw not one, not two, not three, but four interceptions. 
and they're playing right now. And the final score is 25-6. to six. The Patriots would dominate on defense. And then they played the Saints in Week 3, and it did not go well. And then in Week 4, they played the Buccaneers and Tom Brady, their former quarterback. And they lost 19-17. Um, to 17. And then they played the Texans in Week 5. They barely won that game. They should have destroyed them, but they didn't. And then they lost a heartbreaker in Week 6 to the Dallas Cowboys, who are so-called America's team. And it was an overtime, 35-29, Dallas would win. Week 7, oh boy did they kill the Jets. The Jets are a laughing stock, if you didn't know. They're so bad. Like, literally. And the Patriots would kill them, 54-13. to Oh no, that's not good, Jets. Week 8. This is a crazy game against the Los Angeles Chargers. Adrian Phillips, the former Charger with the pick six, to give the Patriots the lead, and they would not give it back as they would win 27-24 to in Los Angeles against the Chargers, who are good. And then they beat the Panthers 24-6 to just yesterday as I'm recording this. For Tiger News, I'm Jax McMahon signing off. It's getting colder outside and we're getting our snow shovels out and starting up our snow blowers. Lucas has a look at our weather. Lucas? Good afternoon everybody. Today is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 40 and a low of 25. Thursday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 32 and a low of 20. Friday will be partly sunny with a high of 42 and a low of 28. Now on to my riddles and trivia questions. Okay. Jay Don, <laughs> you will always find me in the past. I can be created in the present, but the future can never taint me. What am I? I don't know. The answer is history. Yeah. Speaking of history, I'll go straight on to my trivia question. Jack, who was the first president to be impeached? Oh, I forgot, but we just talked about him in history class sometime. So who is it? Andrew Johnson. Now today I have a special guest joining me for my trivia questions. Uh, Maya, here's the mic. Thank you. Um, for your last one, if you drop me, I'm sure the crack, give me a smile and I'll always smile back. What am I? A crab. A, a crab. <laughs> it's a mirror. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lucas. The uh, 1400 hallway has some new artwork by several art students that went up on the wall. Let's check it out.
David has promised us for a couple of weeks his American football versus soccer segment, and it's finally done. Let's check it out. Hey, FHS. How's your day today? I'll be asking to you guys a little bit of questions like football or soccer, football or gridiron. Whichever one you prefer or whichever one you like the best, it doesn't really matter since both of them are enjoyed by millions of people around the globe. So to answer those questions, let's go right into it, shall we? The origins of football as we know it comes from the 19th century by a man named Walter Camp, who later on will help on the rules and changes, like the opening call of scrimmage, the required downs when the other team could have the ball, the 11-man team, and the quarterback position. Football, in the other hand, comes as far as 2500 BC, with many civilizations and empire around the world doing a game that consisted of throwing and or kicking a ball back and forth. Sometime in the eras, the British were the first ones that actually made this game into the one that we all know and enjoy today. They're both fun to play, right? So I hope that you guys enjoyed my last segment in Tiger News for this try. So just remember to have a great Tiger Day. Thank you, David. Ella joins us now for the latest in sports. The girls' swim and dive team is headed to the MSHSL state meet as a team. The Lady Tigers and swim dive team claimed their second consecutive section and won a championship on no, Friday, November 12th in the Rochester Century, scoring 361.5 points. Congrats to Maddie Grimm on reaching the 100 breast section meet record, five school records set, five section champions, and nine entries in eight events to this week's Class 2A state meet. The state meet will take place from November 18th to 20th at Gene K. Freeman Aquatic Center on the campus of the Uni University of Minnesota. Congratulations on a great season, and we look forward to seeing how you do at state. Good luck. The Tiger football team has had a great playoff run. They played Friday night to try to e extend that run versus Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie went up 14 to nothing due to part in a Tiger turnover and shanked punt. The Tigers came roaring back in the second quarter. Here, Connor Weed with the quick pass to Ben Biskins for 11 yards down to the eighth yard line. Next play gives Rod Finley, and he spins his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Finley has 22 rushes for 104 yards. However, the Tigers had three costly turnovers, and Eden Prairie goes back on to win 17 to seven. The Tigers end the season on a strong note, winning five of their final seven games, including the two playoff victories, to finish up a record with six and five. That is all I have for sports, and now let's switch gears into my electric skateboard segment. Hi Tiger News, I'm Ella Tarud, here for my last segment for this Tri Show, and today I will be showing you my electric skateboards. It is a bit too windy to take out the drone like we did last year, so I will show you some of that footage, but for now, let's get into talking about the skateboards. This is the NG2 Swag Skate by Swagtron. This is my first electric skateboard, and it is really heavy, and it is now known as the duct tape board because it didn't serve me a really long time with all the miles I put on it. This is my newest board by Meepo to replace the old duct tape board. The Meepo V3 with extended range can go up to 20 miles, and it has a speed of about 28 miles per hour, but let's test that. Sorry for the weird angle here, but when we accelerate the remote right here, it'll tell us how many miles per hour it's going. So let's try it. That was only 20 miles per hour and it is only on the third setting. A cool thing about the Meepo board is that the remote has a screen on it. It also has four different speed settings. It also tells you how many miles you've gone on it. I've gone 231. Ever since my dad saw how cool my boards were, he wanted to join the fun. This is his backfire board. I don't know too much about it, but I do know it is super smooth to ride and the wheels are huge. This is how big the wheels are. Time for some footage, let's go.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my electric skateboard video and back to the desk. Thanks, Ella. Nate took some time this week to get to know the people behind the show and what they do. Let's go to him now. You can see the anchors of the face of Tiger News, but they're not the producers. They want to know what to say each week for the show. So this week I took some time to get to know the anchors and the producers for Tiger News. Uh, before a show, I basically just wing it and go with the flow. And um, I, I kind of prepare by thinking to myself what I have to do and like make sure I know what, what I'm doing and how to do it. That's basically just it. So what I do during the week to prepare is maybe um, practice my script, like go over it, um, or I'll just like speak my lines while at the desk. For script writing, I usually just like look up stories, prepare for that, and like write all my things so I'm ready for the show um, the day of. Before the show, I typically just look over the script, make sure I know what all I need to say and what all is going on in the script, make sure I'm all ready and just I get out there and I do it. So like, I guess during the week, I mainly are out, I'm out shooting segments for the show and uh, editing in the editing suite and then uh, unlike Ella who normally works on the script and does other things, I normally work on segments and stuff. and. Then uh, on show days, I uh, just help wherever I'm really needed. So if somebody's not here for teleprompter, I'll do that. Or if they're, we need to run like a interview camera for like the couch interviews, uh, I'll try to do that. And yeah, that's basically what I do. I'm a producer with Trevor. He helps anyone who needs help with their segments. And I make sure that the script is done and checked before we go live. I'm also known as a sports anchor. I play back the football video before the show to make sure it's aligned with the video. And then I'll also go through the script to make sure that any names that are hard to pronounce are written out how they're said. Nate Campbell for Tiger News, signing off. The Little Mermaid is Friday night starting at 7 p.m and Saturday night is senior night. Come and support the musical cast this weekend. Everyone on set says thanks for watching. Goodbye.